going to take you through part two of uh, this information where in part two I'm going to cover the things that you're going to want to cover in your backpack, uh, some additional gear you might have in camp, and then last but not least how we put all this together um, so that you're ready for your hunt. So let's first start with what are we going to carry in our backpack. So in our backpack, you know, we're definitely going to carry um, likely some gloves, maybe a warmer hat depending on the weather, our external layers, maybe some middle layers if, depending on again how cold and weather we're dealing with. Um, and certainly with rifle it would be more, um, I'd be carrying more than with archery. And then like I said yesterday, um, you know, we don't leave camp without our rain gear. Um, that's just a recipe to come back early, wet and cold. So we're going to have our rain gear in there. We're going to have our food for the day, you know, our lunch and some snacks and stuff. And then we get into an area where, you know, different guys fall on uh, different sides of the fence on this in terms of water um, and what we're going to drink. A lot of you guys like to use water bladders, I know. I'm typically not a big fan of those just because it's a lot of weight to carry. You know, if they're full, of course, you can limit what you put in them. But I'm also a big fan of carrying some kind of hydration, um, you know, electrolyte kind of drink in one of my water bottles. So during archery season, I will typically carry two of these Nalgene bottles. One will have water and one will have some kind of electrolyte hydration type of uh, drink mix in it. And then um, for rifle season, I might actually carry two of these uh, insulated bottles. I really like these for rifle because I can bring hot drinks in these. I can bring hot water in one, you know, some electrolyte replacement or hot cider. You know, I typically don't bring coffee just because coffee is going to dehydrate us more. And um, you're going to find on these hunts, you really got to drink a lot more water than what you do at home. But um, these can be really great for the cold weather because you can, it's the only way I can drink enough um, during cold weather and, and uh, not get dehydrated. So let's move into some of the more detailed stuff here about what we're going to be carrying in our pack. And probably the one thing I do want to say is that um, for you guided hunters in particular, there is an opportunity maybe not to carry all this stuff like a first aid kit, a water purifier. That's going to be a personal preference, um, you know, because typically your guide might be carrying that and that's something you can discuss with your guide in camp and maybe leave yours back. Because like I said earlier in, um, in part one, I really like to see you guys limit your pack to 20 pounds. Um, you know, you start getting above 20 pounds and that, that can be a lot of weight to be carrying every day. So with that, um, first up, I'll talk about, you know, binoculars and I got my rangefinder here. This happens to be a, a, a bino harness made by QU where I can carry my rangefinder and my uh, binoculars together. Um, I really like bino harnesses as opposed to just having them hang around my neck. This is going to fasten it to me closely. So when I'm hiking, it's not going to be bouncing around or I need to shoot with a bow or rifle. It's not going to be in the way. And as far as binos for out here out west, I'm not saying you have to have these, but ideally, you know, a 10x binocular is, is what I would recommend, even 12x. I happen to have 12x here. Um, you know, back east, you know, or some of the other areas of the country, you might be hunting with 8x for whitetails. But out here out west, 10x is really nice to have um, if you got them and then, and then your range finder. Um, getting into the more details of our, uh, what we carry in our pack, I'll start on this side. This is something you guys may or may not have used before. This is a little thin piece of foam. I really, this doesn't weigh anything in my pack. Um, doesn't take up any space. It's gonna keep my rear end dry when I'm sitting down and also help keep me warm in colder weather. So I really encourage you to think about throwing something like that in. Um, you know, of course, I'm a guy that I need, I need glasses for reading. Um, you know, if you do, you're gonna to wanna to at least have these to fill out your tag. So going to want to have a pair of glasses with you. Um, headlamps. <clears throat> a good headlamp is worth its weight in gold. Um, this happens to be a black diamond, so it's a little bit of a higher end one. But you can even go to Home Depot and a lot of the headlamps they're coming out with that are they're under $30, you can buy a pretty darn nice headlamp. And I like one with varying white lights as well as a red light. The red light's really nice for going in and out of country, you know, if we are going in and out in the dark and not worrying about spooking game. Um, for, more from an emergency standpoint, 
you know, carrying a whistle is definitely a good idea. Uh, I've got a couple lighters here. These are uh, fire starters. Actually, you can get these at Army Surplus. They're really slick. You don't need to use a whole one of these to start a fire. You can black, break off a quarter or a third of that and roll it back up and save the rest. But um, a good idea to have something like that with you. If you want to carry a first aid kit, you know, this one's actually pretty small and lightweight. And you notice I've got it in a plastic bag so the stuff doesn't get wet. Um, an emergency sleeping bag can be a good idea. If you do ever get stuck out there, you know, having an emergency sleeping bag can be... Uh, can be something that is going to help you survive. So, um, of course, we don't want to leave without our license, and you got to make sure in Colorado you need to make sure you sign the license, and then you know, kill an elk, then you would sign the actual carcass tag that goes on the elk. So, carrying your tag in a in a pen is a good idea. Um, if you're an archery hunter, you're going to carry an extra release with you, and I like to carry this in my pack. Um, that's something you don't want to be out without rifle hunters. You're going to carry extra bullets This is what I carry. I can put five extra bullets in here Plus I got four, you know in my rifle and my clip uh, That's nine bullets for the day. I mean if I don't kill the elk with that I should be ashamed of myself um, <laughs> Just kidding, but you know, I carry five extra bullets with me. If you want to carry more that's up to you It's just more weight um, You know, I carry some ibuprofen I carry a uh, a lens cleaner for my binos for, for my scope is a good idea. I do carry uh, an extra light and the reason I do carry this little, this little light here doesn't weigh anything but if I ever run out of batteries and I should have extra batteries with me this headlamp happens to use four so I would have four extra batteries with me but if this runs out of batteries I got another light that I can turn on and get the batteries new batteries in my headlamp so pretty important to have one of these along with you uh, you know, a backup plan from the light. Of course, whatever knife if you want to carry, this is a this is a knife that I like. It works really well for skinning with a wider blade. Although, you guys on guided hunts aren't going to have to worry about that because we're going to do that for you. But certainly, those that want to help us will will look for ways to get you involved and help. A rain fly, another great idea for your backpack. You know, I don't go out go out of camp without one. It helps keep my all my gear dry, um, and my extra clothes dry. A water purifier um, you know now they've got these little squeeze bag ones which are really pretty nice this happens to be one made by Sawyer and um, actually weighs nothing so I put my dirty water in here or my water that needs to be filtered in here I attach my filter to it squeeze the bag into my water bottles and I've got purified water if you're hunting in an area that has access to water which a lot of our areas do that's a nice thing to have simply because it limits it's going to limit the amount of water you got to carry on your back all the time you know of course which is less weight um, you know some other things to think about I don't have here throwaway hand warmers can be really nice in the uh, in the uh, colder weather that's something where maybe you get together with the other guys you're hunting with and you bring you know enough for everybody where everybody's not bringing a whole box because you know some days you won't even use one um, a good pair of polarized sunglasses. You definitely want these in Colorado. Um, are, you're going to find if you haven't been here at altitude, our sun is a lot brighter. Um, and you put some fresh snow on the ground with that, and you can you can get snow blindness blind pretty easy without a good pair of sunglasses. Um, and then getting down to the last couple things here, um, some toilet paper. You always want to have that in your pack. Um, and then the last thing is your gaiters. I may not carry my gator someday if it's supposed to be dry, but if we're in a weather pattern where we're getting a thunderstorm every day during archery or we're getting snow showers every day during rifle, I'm going to have my gators with me too if I don't have them on. So with that, I think that covers everything that I wanted to cover in terms of, you know, what are the things to go, uh, you know, in your backpack. And now we'll get into some of the other gear uh, next about What's other gear you're going to want to have all along with you, but leave back in camp. Okay, let's get into some of the other things that we're going to want to have with us on these hunts that we're going to leave in camp, but certainly important to have. Um, first, from an archery standpoint, you know, I'm going to have some extra broadheads with me um, and also some extra arrows. Uh, extra arrows, you know, you can get an arrow case and probably share that with your buddy where you bring five apiece would be plenty. 
I'll show you mine later when we get ready to go through how to pack. Um, if you've got a small game license, you may want a couple grouse tips. You know, we do have a bunch of blue grouse in the back country and um, certainly pretty good to eat for an appetizer one night. I, I tend to bring some rubber uh, practice tips too. Really great for shooting at stumps. Stay tuned up, um, you know, for when you do get a shot opportunity. Having um, some multi-tools around is not a bad idea. I've got a Leatherman here I like to carry. It's got everything on it um, that I need. And then, uh, you know, for you archery hunters in particular, having a set of Allen wrenches is a good thing. Something comes loose on your bow, you can certainly tighten it up. Um, I didn't mention, uh, you know, carrying a camera with us um, in your backpack, but certainly you would want to do that. You're going to have your, likely your phone with you, um, run it in airplane mode, unless you're trying to get service and send a text or something, which some of you guys will be able to do. There are spots we can get service, not every provider, but for sure Verizon gets service. But having you, you won't want to have your phone with you every day for taking pictures and stuff like that. And so having an extra uh, battery pack along to recharge your phone or two is a really good idea. Um, you know, depending on how powerful it is. With this one, I can typically get by in a week if I use my phone sparingly with one of these, I can recharge my phone at least twice. Um, I like having an extra headlamp back in camp. That way, the one that I have in my backpack for hunting each day, I leave that in my backpack, so I've always got it with me. And then I've got one, you know, back in camp for, you know, getting around camp at night and early mornings, what I need to do. This is actually a pretty slick thing. Um, I'll show it. This is not something you have to have, but I've got myself a little inflatable pillow here. You can use a down jacket for a pillow or whatever, but I tend to bring this along. It doesn't take up any space or weight and just helps me sleep a little bit better at night. Um, rifle hunters, you want to have an extra box of bullets. Um, I would say that one box is plenty. I've seen guys bring more, but it just it's just more weight and hopefully one box is going to be plenty. Kill your elk and even a deer. Um, it's a good idea to have a, uh, a set of camp shoes. Um, these uh, Crocs are great. You'll never see me wearing these in town, but um, around camp, they're comfortable. They keep my feet dry and, um, you know, enables me to dry my boots at night. Um, you know, so that's, that's kind of some of the extra gear stuff. Um, you know, of course, the other things that you're going to want to do and have along is your toiletries. Um, you know, and for that kind of stuff, you can either use a Ziploc bag or a... Uh, plastic container like this. A couple of these plastic containers can be really nice to organize your gear. I'm really big on organizing my stuff because then when I get into camp I can slide this stuff underneath my cot and it makes it easy to find it. So something to think about there uh, for your toiletries and please get travel size toiletries or you can buy these little plastic bottles in, in REI or even in Walmart um, for you know where you can bring just the amount of soap that you need versus bringing a whole bottle, that's just more space, more weight. You know, same thing goes for batteries. You're gonna to wanna to have some extra batteries besides those in your pack. You know, maybe you and your buddy split a 10 pack as extra as backup, you know, in addition to the three or four you have in your pack for your headlamp. Um, another opportunity, good thing to have along that you can share is cold medicines. You know, you really should bring some cold meds along with you in case somebody comes down with a cold or doesn't feel well, um, but Hopefully not everybody's going to get sick that, you know, if you share and something like that, that's a good way to do it. Um, I like bringing some, some scent-free towels to wipe down with at night, you know, particularly in colder weather when I can't take a shower. What you can do is put these in a Ziploc bag, a couple of these in, in a pot of water, put it on the wood stove, heat the water up, and you got nice warm towels to wipe down with. You know, in the archery season, if I'm planning on taking a solar shower, which we we do have solar showers around most times. I've got a washcloth and a backpacker's towel. You know, not a bad thing to have along. Again, doesn't weigh much, doesn't take up any space. And then probably the last thing I'll say that you'll want to have along is, um, of course, we provide three meals a day on our guided hunts, but, you know, it's incumbent upon you to bring any personal snacks that you might want, any special drink mixes you might want. You know, on the snack end of things, you know, you're going to be exerting yourself pretty tough every day with between the altitude and some of the hiking that we're going to do. So, 
I would definitely plan on bringing some quality snacks, you know, that are going to provide energy as well as uh, protein supplementation, you know, protein bars. Definitely a good thing to have along. They also help curb your appetite. And then just to show you guys some of the drink mixes I like, this is actually one by Mountain Ops. It's called Ignite. I typically tend to use this one in the morning. It's got a little extra caffeine in it. it gives me a big, a good bump. And I think it really helps my performance, you know, in hiking in the morning. If you got one container of this between four guys, um, would be plenty. And it doesn't have to be Mountain Ops. It could be powdered Gatorade. It could be whatever you like. But that's just one that I like. And then the other ones that I use for Mountain Ops is called, uh, these are two different flavors, but it's called Endura. I find that this stuff is really good for recovery. Um, it also can help with muscle fatigue. If I get soreness in my muscles, this stuff seems to help me work it out pretty quick. And again, if you get a, you know, a bulk container, you could split that between a number of guys. There's like 30 servings in this. So if you're drinking one a day per person, you know, that's going to give you, that's going to be, give you enough for five day hunt. Um, they also do make it, you're going to pay a little bit more, but it is convenient. They make this individual size packages, um, where you get 20 in a, in a thing and you can buy them that way. Um, they're really handy if you're wanting to carry some extra stuff in your pack each day. So I think that covers the additional things that we, uh, are going to need in camp and, and what to bring. And again, I want to emphasize, bring what you need, but you know, please don't, don't bring a whole bunch of stuff that you don't need because we are limited on space and weight. Okay. Now so, we're going to get into how to put all this stuff together so that you're ready, you know, for your hunt when you get to the trailhead. So it's really putting it all together in your gear bags and whatnot. The first thing I want to say is that we've had times sometimes where guys will come with great big duffel bags and that really doesn't work out well for us. It's, it's just too big and bulky to pack. So what we like to have you guys bring your gear in is, is either small or medium sized duffel bags. If you can get these, if you have two of them, if you can get them close to equal weight, even better yet, you know, we'll work through it if they're not, but it's just going to help your packers out. Um, but medium sized duffel bags, like the one I've got my gear loaded in, or like this one here, are really what you want. If you've got a big shoulder strap, you might want to take that off. It's just something to get in the way. Um, if you got the two, all you're going to need is the two handles. So in any case, that's it on the bags. Now let's get into how would I load my stuff. So I've got, you can see, I've got the bulk of my stuff in the bag um, already. You know, I've got the things that I share with you guys. And then a trick that I like to do with my boots is, in fact, I even bring a few extras of these because these are great for wet or muddy gear, you know, whether you're going in or going out. But I take my boots, I put my boots in here, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my boots and I'm going to put one, one on one end of my gear bag. And I got that hard end out because that, that, that gives me some, that gives your packers something to pack firm against and if, if they're loading this in panniers or even, um, you know, if they're manning up the loads. And then I'm going to take my other one and do the same thing. Got my boots in the bag, and I can stuff it down to this other end and put the sole side out. You know, and that kind of keeps everything together in the center. Um, you know, and keeps it all all, all nice and uh, packed tight. The other thing I'm going to do is with binoculars or anything that else that I might um, have that's delicate of gear wise. I can take this and I can lift up some of these clothes. And put that right down in there where that's nice and secure. I'm going to bring my favorite Crocs, which work out good for me. Stuff those in here. And I'm going to bet that if I slide this over, this is actually my sleeping bag. This is that 15 degree bag. My, my other bag, um, my cold weather bag, um, that one doesn't pack up quite as small with that. So I probably wouldn't be able to get that one in my gear bag. But doesn't matter. We can take the sleeping bag in your bag or separate, whatever's going to work. And so, let me get this in there too. I'll work it. Yeah, here we go. Okay. And then I've got everything I need. <laughs> zipper turned the wrong way. There we go. We got everything I need in that one bag. So that's my gear bag with all my gear. Okay. 
as you can see, I've got everything together here. Um, and this is the way that you would, ri would arrive at the trailhead. Um, one of the things I want to say, of course, I don't have everything in my backpack here, but um, you know, you guys saw what I was carrying and I didn't take, I didn't take the time to load my backpack, but a few things really important to leave out. Um, you know, you want to come to the trailhead with your water bottles full or with whatever you want to drink on the way in. Um, you know, we can put these in your saddlebag so you've got something to drink on the ride in. Um, also, another good idea is to uh, leave your rain gear out. You'll definitely want to have this out. We can tie it behind the saddle or put it, um, you know, in the saddlebags or even if you're going to leave your backpack out, you know, stuff it in your backpack and we'll put your backpack on the opposite side of your horse or mule from your rifle to kind of balance the weight out from your from your rifle on the one side. So leave your rain gear out. If there's any personal snacks or food um, that you'll want access to on the way in, you know, leave that out, put it in your pockets. We can put it in the saddlebags, whatever. So you've got access to that. And um, you know, and then when you get to the trailhead, you're gonna have you're gonna have your bow. Again, you and a buddy can share an arrow case where I bring five, you bring five, that should be plenty with the five you got in your quiver. And then you've got, or you rifle hunters would have a rifle or muzzle loaders would have a muzzle loader. Keep in mind, we have scabbards for both bows and rifles. So, you know, you will bring your stuff, your weapon to the trailhead, you know, in a case, but then we're gonna wanna take that out and we'll put it in a scabbard on your horse or mule. Um, you know, I've got my other gear here that you saw that I packed up. And then the only other thing that I'm going to have is maybe I share the box. You know, I could get a plastic, a small plastic container or a couple of small cardboard boxes and pack up, you know, whatever drink mix, whatever snacks you guys are bringing as a group, an opportunity then to, to share there, you know, and that's kind of a key theme. If there's the opportunities to share between guys, do it because it's going to save on space and weight and you really don't, you know, need to bring any more than what you're going to use. So, um, you know, sharing is definitely a good thing. Uh, probably the other thing I want to talk about a little bit too is, uh, you know, if you do have anything that's delicate that needs to be packed, um, you know, hold that aside and, and, and give it to the packers and they'll find a safe place for it. You know, if there's something you're really concerned about on the ride in, they, they can help you figure that out. Also, I didn't mention earlier, but I'll mention it now. Um, adult beverages are allowed in moderation. You know, um, realize you guys might want to have a drink after killing a nice bull or something like that. But we are limited in how much beer we can pack in for say, you know, if there's four guys and maybe you want to bring a case, we can work that out, but we can't pack in cases of beer. We don't have the space and, and capacity to do that. Just too much weight. You know, if you're bringing some kind of whiskey or something like that, rather than bringing a glass bottle, you can get some metal or plastic flasks. There's plenty of that kind of stuff where you bring a little flask. Um, you know, if you're thinking about wine, you know, certainly box wine is a great option. You know, if you're going to share a box of wine between two to four guys, whatever, um, that could work. Um, you know, bottles would be more touchy, but if you did have a bottle or something, you know, again, give that to the packer and we can work that out. So that kind of sums up, you know, how to put your stuff together. Again, you're going to have your backpack. You're going to leave those couple items out I said. You're going to have your gear bag, maybe some personal snacks, your weapon, maybe an arrow case. And that should be that should be it, what, what you're showing up with and um, at the trailhead.